carbonara is simply one of the great classic Italian pasta dishes, and this is how I have adapted it for myself. Beautiful, I love carbonara. You adapt it to yourself? Okay, let's see what you did. I'm already worried. Over the years, I have settled on using a very small amount of milk, not cream. This is. Are you mad? So I'll just cut the root ends off like five cloves. Five cloves? What are you trying to do? Are you trying to scare Dracula? You know what I mean. A little bit of fresh herb, I've got some sage and rosemary. What, what are you talking about? The thicker sliced the bacon is, the better, I am H.O. Ma che c***o dici? Ma che c***o dici la gente? I don't understand, my friend. In this video, we are reacting to Adam Ragusea Zucchini Carbonara. Hey, let me tell you, it can be done if you're vegetarian. And I've made a series about carbonara done in different ways. And one of the videos is how to make vegetarian carbonara like an Italian. And let me tell you, it's done the correct way. Carbonara style, everything is correct. But I use zucchini instead. So let's see if Adam can make carbonara with zucchini just the way I do. Carbonara is simply one of the great classic Italian pasta dishes. And this is how I have adapted it for myself. Beautiful, I love carbonara. You adapt it to yourself? Okay, let's see what you did. I'm already worried. The magic ingredient in any carbonara, though, is egg. The yeah, bravo, Adam. We'll need one egg yolk per person, and I'm making two portions. Bravo, bravo. You always need one egg per person and an extra egg. So now, in the modern days, carbonara is made with just the egg yolk, okay? Originally, it's made with the entire egg. We don't want to waste the white, okay? In these days, I also make the carbonara with the egg yolk and I use the white to make amaretti. I always make amaretti, it takes 20 minutes to make them. He's using one egg yolk per person. Yeah, correct, okay. But you always need an extra egg to put in the dish. So if you have five people, you have five egg yolks and an extra egg. You always need the extra egg on top of everything. Back the egg and pass the yolk between the two halves until the white just kind of slimes its way out. Doesn't matter if you retain a little white in there. Doesn't matter, you're right. In the United States, carbonara is often a glorified cream sauce. Cream is not traditional in Italy. Now, guys, no cream in carbonara, please. This is the right time for you to get this t-shirt and remind everyone that you don't put cream in carbonara. You can buy it from vincentosplatestore.com or just go in the description below and click on the link and you will love this t-shirt. Everybody's gonna stop you on the street, tell you, yes, Yes, you're right. <laughs> Over the years, I've settled on using a very small amount of milk, not cream. This is... Are you mad? No, stop. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? You're not using cream, but you're using milk? What is going on with you, Adam? You're a food scientist. You put milk, use the extra egg, like I said. You don't put milk. You're not making frittata. Are you making frittata? Now we need a huge amount of pepper. Some people say the carbon in the name of this dish derives from the black color of all that pepper. That probably isn't true, but this is still good with a ton of pepper in it. Bravo, bravo, bravo. They say the word carbonara comes from the guys that created the, carbon, the carbonara. Basically, they used to work in the coal mine and they made the carbonara with a lot of pepper to remind you know, the, the coal and the environment and they call it carbone. Carbone is uh, coal. So, carbonara. Likewise, a ton of pecorino or Parmesan cheese. I basically just... Bravissimo, yeah, a lot, a ton. I like the way he said it. You don't measure this. Fill my measuring cup up with it, stir that up smooth, and there's my sauce. Minus one crucial ingredient yet to come. I like a lot of garlic in this. So... Okay, okay, guys, don't, don't be scared. I know why he's using garlic. He's using garlic because he's not using guanciale. Guanciale or pancetta, they have flavors already in it, okay? But in this case, he's using zucchini, and zucchini doesn't have a strong flavor, so he needs to give zucchini a little kick with a garlic. So I'll just cut the root ends off like five cloves. Five cloves? What are you trying to do? Are you trying to scare Dracula? You know what I mean. Okay. Dracula is not coming to eat at your place. Do not, you don't need that much. Oh, you're, you're not gonna kiss your girlfriend for a very long time if you eat five cloves of garlic. What's going on with you? One, maximum two cloves. 
cut them with the side of the knife to loosen the skins, pop them out, and hmm, look at that. That's the green sprout that grows in the core of garlic cloves as they age. He's a garlic connoisseur. <laughs> Chop all that up. Chopped beautifully, bravo. Chopped beautifully. A little bit of fresh herb. I've got some sage and rosemary. What, what are you talking about? You're not making a casserole? Are you doing carbonara casserole? Rosemary? You're not making a casserole? Are you doing a chicken casserole? Okay, then it's okay. But you don't need this for carbonara. Zucchini doesn't need rosemary or sage. Carbonara is kind of tricky and time sensitive in its final stages. He's even chopping it up. I don't understand. I don't understand what you're doing here. So this is one of those times when I like to do all of my prep in advance. And I like to have a lot of vegetable in my carbonara, not traditional, but I don't need to be eating so many damn carbs. You're calling the carbonara zucchini, so I'm expecting you to make carbonara with zucchini. But then you add the milk, and then you add the rosemary and the sage. What else are you going to put in there? One big zucchini or a couple smaller ones. Credit where it's due, I got this idea years ago from a Jamie Oliver show. <laughs> my friend Jamie Oliver. Hi, Jamie. <laughs> Stem and blossom ends off, and I think a lot of knife injuries happen when people try to cut round things that then roll out of control. Okay, you're a bit too dramatic, my friend, but you know, if you take your time to cut the uh, zucchini in the kitchen, you'll be, you're gonna be okay. Don't scare people, please. You already scared Dracula over there. Now, just don't scare us, okay? No cream in carbonara deal with something like this is to hook my stabilizing hand above and around the knife. Once it's in half, you don't have to deal with that. I was never scared to see someone cutting zucchini. I'm so worried he's going to cut his finger. I don't think I'm going to cut zucchini ever again in my life. Wobbly side anymore, just lay it on the cut side and I'll cut this into quarters. Inside each of these is the seedy core. Yeah, what's wrong with that? This part of the zucchini tends to cook faster than the rest and go kind of slimy. So I just like to shave off that triangle of seeds and toss it out. What? What? Why? You use the entire zucchini. Don't show this to my nonna, she will get upset with you. Adam, we need to use the entire zucchini. It's beautiful zucchini. You don't need to toss it out. That's good for you. The entire zucchini is good for you. If you do this, you'll have a nice, firm, regularly shaped piece that cooks really easy. Who told you this? Did Jamie Oliver say this in the video? Tell me which video it is, because I'm going to tell him off. Evenly, I want my zucchini crisp. I'm cutting them down further into pieces roughly the size and shape of the pasta I like to use for this, which... Okay, that's what you choose, but if you want to have a carbonara experience, you need to... They're replacing guanciale. The zucchini is replacing the guanciale. So you need to cut in small pieces, and then you, you want to cook them before you do everything. You know, you want to uh, kind, of, uh, kind of fry, you know, like shallow fry the zucchini. You need to be nice and crispy. Prep is now done, and just incorporating that much veg has already knocked a lot of calories out of the dish to come. I'm also getting control of my excessive carb intake thanks to... My friend, you're stressing me too much. And your carbs intake, what's going on? We're making carbonara. If you eat carbonara, you're not worried about carbs, okay? You're a vegetarian, okay, you can have guanciale, but you still want carbs with the zucchini, okay? So, come on. Time to actually cook this carbonara. A pot of salted water for the pasta goes on high heat. Where is the water? Is that, is that a little pot you're using to cook the pasta? It looks like there's no water in there. There's no water at all. This is too small. When you cook a pasta, the pasta needs to make love, needs to dance in a large pot full of water. You need minimum a liter of water for every 100 grams of pasta. Okay? So what is this? And while that comes to a boil, I will grab a much bigger pan where the finished dish will be assembled. Beautiful pan, I have to say. I really like it. I really, really like this pan. Look how beautiful. And into this, I will simply snip my bacon with kitchen. Am I watching the same video here or have I changed channel? He's making a zucchini carbonara with penne, with milk, with rosemary, with sage. And now all of a sudden, He's using bacon, it's not guanciale, it's not pancetta, it's meat. It's got meat in it, so he's not vegetarian. Why? Why, Adam? Why are you cutting the bacon so big? The thicker slice the bacon is, the better, I am H.O. Ma che cazzo dici? Ma che cazzo dici la gente? I don't understand, my friend. You're a disgraziato. My friend. You're making bacon and egg roll. You're not making carbonara anymore. These bacon, these bacon pieces are so big, and they are perfect for bacon and egg roll. 
maybe three ounces of bacon per person, 85 grams per person. Carbonara is traditionally made with guanciale or... Hey, you know that. Any cured fatty pork situation is going to be fine. You could... It's not true. It's not true. Guanciale and pancetta are cured. This bacon, it's smoked, okay? I'm going to sue you. I'm going to call the carbonara lawyer, Adam, and sue you. You're not going to eat carbonara for the rest of your life. Trial is over. You are guilty. On all counts, you are guilty. Okay? Bacon. I always find smoked bacon. Some of you, a butcher, friend of mine, you wrote a comment below, told me that bacon, cured bacon exists. Yes, okay, I believe you, but I've never found it. I've never been able to find it. It's not easy to find. So when challenge the pancetta is the cure, it's got different flavors to the smoked bacon. So what are you talking about? Skip this and just use some olive oil if you want to keep it meatless, but I might also consider... Wait, are you, what, what? are you telling me that you're using bacon so you don't have to use olive oil? What's going on with you? What are you talking about? Wait, you, know, you want to make this meatless? Okay, you use extra virgin olive oil. But you're using this because you're trying to make a carbonara. If you're making zucchini carbonara, you don't need this. You don't need bacon. You just need extra virgin olive oil. Bravo, you need that fat. But in this case, you don't tell people that you're using bacon because you're replacing it with olive oil. In this case, I would say to you, use olive oils a lot better than smoky bacon. Consider a meatless imitation bacon. I've got that in a cold pan, and now I will turn the heat on medium. Fat starts to render or melt out of the tissue at a much lower temperature than meat starts to brown. So starting it in a cold pan gives the fat a good head start. I want lots of rendered bacon fat in my sauce. That's what you want, bravo, that's what you want. If the pieces were smaller, I could, you know, be nicer to you, but too big, the chunks, the steaks. You got bacon steaks. Water is boiling, so in goes where is the water? There's no water in there. <laughs> like three ounces of pasta per person. Is that kid's pasta? What is that? It looks like a kid's pasta. Again, 85 grams. I'm using chickpea pasta because I'm no fun anymore. It's higher protein. I'm, I'm sorry for you, my friend. I enjoy chickpea pasta every now and then, but not all the time. And once I hear, it's okay. But I'm sorry. It's not fun for you anymore. I'm sorry, Adam. In lower carb, I would cook any pot. Again, it's low carbs. Oh. Pasta for this dish a minute or two less than what the package recommends because it's going to cook some more in the pan. If you're bravo, 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 yes. Bacon ever seems like oh, there is a little bit of water in there. It's so small. Wow. Like it's outrunning your pasta. Like it's going to burn before the pasta is ready. Just take it off the heat for a sec. But I like. To Can I ask you one question. Where are the zucchini? Have you cooked the zucchini already? The zucchini needs to be cooked before the bacon. The zucchini needs to be cooked before everything else because it takes longer to cook. Merely one minute before draining my pasta, I will stir in my zucchini. You well, the zucchini needs to cook. They take longer. They take uh, 10, 15 minutes to cook, to get softer. They're going to be hard. Are you going to eat hard zucchini, raw zucchini? They need to be cooked before everything else with the olive oil. And then you can put the smoky steak, bacon steaks in there. And then the, the pasta is cooked once everything is ready. And then you put the pasta in there with the eggs. Oh, I don't know what to say anymore. You could hit those with some seasoning, but I think they'll get enough from the salty bacon. Forgive me, I need to TikTok. Bloody TikTok. Right before I drain my pasta, I will stir in my garlic and turn. Wait, wait, is this still a carbonara? I forgot about the garlic before. You used so many ingredients. But the garlic should have been done a bit earlier too, you know? like. Have you heard about sofrito, browning the garlic? Okay, well, sounds like you like it raw anyway. Turn the heat off. Time to drain the pasta, but first I will put a little glass. Do you still call this a carbonara? I don't get it. I don't get it. Carbonara sauce is generally made with starchy, salty pasta water. And I think this is a very convenient way to retain some of it. Yeah, because the pasta has the starch and uh, basically the starchy water helps to combine all the ingredients. You know, the pasta and the sauce. In this case, you might ask yourself, but he is using uh, chickpea pasta. Yes, chickpea pasta has lots of starch too. So what he's doing is actually correct. Just try to catch some of it in the glass as you drain through a gap in the lid. To make it easier for you next time, get a mug, put it in the water and collect some water. Easy. Very undercooked, but by the time it actually hits the plate, it'll be perfect. And it No, he said one minute before. It's, it, it is undercooked. It's raw. It's not cooked. In goes the pasta to fry for a second the bacon fat. See that bacon fond? I will now deglaze that with the pasta water. I want to... 
Okay. Be conservative about the pasta water. I can always add more later if the sauce is too tight. But at the same time, you want enough in there because the pan needs to be sloshy before the egg mix. Ooh, the pan left. Look, it jumps. I want to be here. I don't want to be eaten. I got a carbonara. I want real carbonara. Look, it left. That will help. You put it back in. Oh, I'm so sorry for you, Penna. I'm so sorry integrate more smoothly and the starch will make it less likely that the egg will curdle and here we go he knows what he's doing this is the tricky part stir 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 wait 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 is the pen off the pen should be off but at the same time if you are a beginner if you're a carbonara beginner it is good to have the pen on a very 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 low heat very very low extremely low okay and that will help you to combine all the ingredients and to make it creamy very hard to make carbonara for someone who's never made it. So I recommend you to have the pan slightly, slightly, slightly on very, very low, low, low. Stir, stir, or you'll instantly have scrambled eggs. Remember, it is true. If your cooktop is on a high heat, you turn into frittata, scrambled eggs. And that's the reason why your cooktop needs to be very, very, very low or off my heat is off. You got to give this sauce just enough heat to make it cook to thicken, but if it gets too hot, it will start to curdle and go grainy. That's actually beautiful. Very nice. The cream, I mean, the cream is nice. In fact, let me show you what that looks like. A little more pasta water in the sauce if it's looking too thick. The cream is looking good. In goes the herbs at the last second. Oh, why the herbs? Why? Why the herbs? Okay, why do you call this carbonara? Carbonara pasta. Carbonara pasta with zucchini. So if you told me I'm making zucchini carbonara, I can work around. But you're saying to me you're making carbonara with zucchini. There is nothing that reminds me of carbonara technique in this. The way you cooked it, there is no carbonara technique at all. And look at this. See the texture of that sauce? It's gritty. It's grainy. This happens when you let carbonara sauce get too hot and there's really no way to fix it once it's happened. Let me... It looks nice for a dish. It looks nice for a dish. And I, I don't mind eating this. Actually, I would like to try it. But there is no way I call something like this carbonara. No way I call this carbonara. No way. Show you how to prevent that. I'll do this one with real pasta, just so you can see how that looks too. Let it fry a little bit, deglaze the pan with pasta water. And then this time, I'll take the pan all the way off the hot. I can't see anything too. One with real pasta, just so you can see how that looks. A real pasta. I like the way he said it. A real pasta. He knows. <laughs> it's real pasta, not a chickpea pasta for kids. Let it fry a little bit, deglaze the pan with pasta water, and then this time I'll take the pan all... I can't see anything. Oh my God. So smoky. Must be the smoky bacon. Hot burner and wait for it to stop bubbling. This is a lot safer, letting the pot cool way down before the egg mixture goes in. It is, it is safer. It's a bit more difficult. So you need to make sure the, the, hot, the pan is nice and hot, okay? Not on the cooktop, but the pan needs to be nice and hot. And you do need a little bit of pasta water at the bottom, so when you put the egg inside, it doesn't it doesn't become scrambled egg. Stir, 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 and now the egg is smoothly integrated, but you can see it hasn't cooked yet. It's still really liquid. Yes. Now I will simply return the pan to the heat, stir constantly, and watch it. The heat needs to be very, 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 very low, Adam, very low. In an instant, you will see it thicken and go custardy. And the second that happens, back off the heat this comes. Adjust with more pasta water. Remember that the sauce will thicken as it cools. So it Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, pasta water is your best friend. Should look a little too loose in the pan. Herbs in at the last second. Oh my God, it's bloody herbs. Why well, you don't need herbs, mannaggia, disgraziato. Note the kind of cafe au lait color of the sauce. That's because of the milk. I like a lot of dissolved. I forgot about the milk, it just reminded me. What are you talking about? This is madness. This is madness. You put milk in your carbonara, Adam. This is so sad. This is sad for all the Romans out there who have been eating carbonara. For all the Romans who, who have died eating the best carbonara, who have died trying to teach you how to make carbonara. The whole generations that are not here with us anymore. You're doing this. And this is so sad for them. I'm, I'm sorry for you guys that you have to watch this. Milk in carbonara. No cream and no milk in carbonara, please, okay? Just get this t-shirt, guys. Remind everyone, please, when you go on the street. Get it. VincenzosPlateStore.com or the description below has the link. You can order it now and everybody is going to love you. Dissolved bacon fond in my carbonara, so without the milk to balance that brown color, the sauce would be unappetizingly. Guys, I don't know what to say. This Adam is a great scientist. He knows a lot about food. He knows... A lot about all the scientists, scientists, 
scientific, scientific, scientific. Um, this is good, but he cannot make carbonara. Uh, he cannot make bolognese. And he cannot make gnocchi. So these three things, Adam, you cannot make, okay? Uh, you're a great guy. We all look like you. We all subscribe to you. I've been subscribed to Adam for a very long time. And I do like and support you. But come on. You don't do this to carbonara. No milk in carbonara, please. Adam, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for watching. <laughs> Uh, I want to say uh, I love you so much, guys. You are wonderful. Every single week, I can't wait to share that reaction. But no, we, we're not talking about the chef that makes it. We're talking about the food and how it's made. So we're not criticizing the person or judging the person, but the food and how it's made. And it is fun because we are learning with a little bit of humor, you know, uh, but we've never been disrespectful to anyone. So thank you so much for watching. Let's have fun together. And I'll see you in the next Vincenzo's Plate reaction video. E ora si mangia. Carbonara with no cream. <laughs>